This lesson is part of my video course that teaches how to build event-driven Spring Boot microservices with Apache Kafka. For other lessons in this playlist, please check description of this lesson. In the following video lessons, you will learn how to use Kafka and database transactions together. Let's see how it works when database operations and Kafka operations participate in the same transaction. In the following lessons, we will have transfer microservice that will act as Kafka producer. To send the HTTP request to this microservice, we will use Postman HTTP client. Transfer microservice will have a HTTP request handler method. This handler method will handle the request and it will pass money transfer details to a method in the service class that works with Kafka producer. Now, in the service class, we'll have a method that will be used to run main business logic. And in this method, we will use Kafka producer to send Kafka message to Kafka topic that is called withdraw money topic. And another message it will send to a Kafka topic that is called deposit money topic. To read messages from these topics, we will have two consumer microservices. Now, in the transfer microservice, we will have Kafka transactions enabled. And this means that we will annotate method that sends Kafka messages with transactional annotation. And this will make both of our send methods execute within single Kafka transaction. And this transaction will be managed by Kafka Transactional Manager. If transaction fails, then Kafka messages that are sent within this transaction, they will not be committed. And to make sure that consumer microservices do not read messages that were not successfully committed, these two consumer microservices are configured to read committed messages only. And this same method, it will also send a HTTP call to another microservice. Now, until this point, you have seen how it all works in previous section of the course. In this section of the course, we will make this method save information to database table. And for this operation to be transactional, we will create GPA transaction manager. And it will be this transaction manager that will manage transaction for database operation. So in this section of the course, we will have two transaction managers. One transaction manager is called Kafka transaction manager. And another transaction manager is called GPA transaction manager. Kafka transaction manager will manage Kafka transactions and GPA transaction manager will be used to manage database transaction. Now, when we want to send records to Kafka and when we want to perform database operations in the same method, we can use transactional annotation with normal Spring transaction management. And this can be GPA transaction manager or it can be data source transaction manager, for example. And even though we have Kafka operations and we have database operations in the same method, they can still participate in the same transaction. And it works because Spring Framework has a component that is called transaction interceptor. And this transaction interceptor, it manages behavior of methods that are annotated with transactional annotation. When method with transactional annotation is called, interceptor is invoked first. It will start transaction before executing the method. Now, when this interceptor starts transaction, Kafka template object that we use to send Kafka messages, it will synchronize its transaction with a transaction that is started by this transaction manager. So each Kafka's send method and database save method, they will all participate in the same transaction. And when our method exits, database transaction will commit first, followed by Kafka transaction. Now, if you do not need synchronized transactions and you want to perform database transaction separately from Kafka transaction, then you will need to organize your code in two separate methods. For example, Java code that sends message to Kafka topics will be in one method and Java code that updates database will be in another method. Method that works with Kafka operations, it will be annotated with transactional annotation that uses Kafka Transaction Manager. And method that performs database operations will be annotated with transactional annotation that uses GPA Transaction Manager. And then you will simply call one method from another. This will create two separate transactions that are called nested transactions. In this case, Kafka transaction and database transaction, they will be separate transactions. And even if exception take place within Kafka transaction, database transaction can still commit. Kafka transaction will roll back, but database transaction will not. 
All right, so this was briefly about how we can make our application work with Kafka and database transactions. Let's continue and in the following lessons, you will see how both of these transactions work. We will first write code to see how Kafka and database operations participate in the same transaction. And then we'll write code to see how Kafka and database transactions work separately.